video games. From the wee age of six or seven, or whenever I started playing games, my world of skating, playing baseball, or anything that is healthy for you in the long run withered away before my eyes as I sunk into the world where I fought the covenant, used a chainsaw to kill people, or got caught slurs in a cod lobby. My bitch, fuck you. And all that led me here, scripting this video in my dark room at four in the morning. Don't worry about me. I like video games. I could be classified as what the children call a, a gamer. Man, he's going for you. <laughs> oh my god! No! <laughs> I hate you, dude. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> Why should I have a reverb? <laughs> I like that clip a lot. My apologies, by the way. Whatever happened to formality, am I right? I'm Dr. Skipper, and I grew up playing video games. Like most of you, instead of focusing on my academics or planning for the future, I dicked around on the internet and played games all day. Hey, there we go. Yeah, fuck you, idiot. But let's go further back. Judgment Day. I was introduced to gaming when I was about seven years old. My dad had a PS2 where he would only play Madden, and my stepdad had an Xbox where he would play Halo. I never played Madden, but I did play a bit of Halo 2 when I was a stupid idiot moron. So when my goofy goober brain became whole, the Nintendo Wii released and I ate my little heart out playing Wii Sports in that one Star Wars The Clone Wars game. You guys remember the Nintendo Wii Clone Wars game? That shit was awesome. And that Indiana Jones game with the plane fight? The hell is it called? Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. I have no idea why the hell this game was made, but it slapped. Nice catch. But then my life changed. I skipped a small detail in this story. Before the Wii, my stepdad bought a console. One of the best consoles of all time that shaped the life I have today. The Xbox 360. Before this, I had a variety of handhelds. My Game Boy for Mario Kart and the Larry Boy game. You know, the cucumber from VeggieTales. I had a normal DS, the PSP. I even went beast mode on the DSi, making flip note animations. But the Xbox 360 was the first console I played consciously. It's a meme at this point how much I mention my age in videos, but I'm 19. Not a 25 year old boomer who grew up with the Atari or some shit. Hey! <laughs> Oops. Where I was once an idiot kid that had no idea what the hell he was doing, I was now a lesser idiot and understood what I was actually supposed to do in that little pixel world. To the Mormons, Karens, Squares, or anybody who had a boring childhood, cover your ears, but the first game I ever really enjoyed playing a lot was Gears of War. It was bloody, violent, and fun. And believe it or not, by my appearance, I haven't shot up a school. So no Miss fucking Prickle Pants who teaches third grade or something. They gave me have you bloody and swear he didn't make me a violent degenerate. Maybe not yet, who the fucking know? And from there I evolved with my love in games. Halo 3 came out and I loved it. Gears of War 2 came out and I fucking adored it. And when Halo Reach came out in 2010, I got my very own Xbox that Christmas. And that was the game I probably love most today. Look. You might have no idea who the hell I am, or this might be your first time ever watching me, but I really love video games. I didn't grow up playing the original Dooms or Crash Bandicoot, but I started young and ever since then I've gone back to play those classics. Even though today I mainly play PC games, I understand the impact of consoles, and that's why I wanted to make this video. So the last year I made some money by selling my soul to the YouTube algorithm and made an investment toward my YouTube channel for, uh, tax reasons. <laughs> Wink, wink, and bought a PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S because I don't care about the disc on this one. <laughs> and ever since, I found myself in a weird situation where my consoles are collecting dust. So I started to reflect on the last 10 years of console gaming, and I realized that consoles are just not hitting the same anymore. But why do they not hit the same anymore? Some of you might be having the time of your lives on the PS5 or Xbox Series X because you have nothing to compare it to, or you don't have the empty shriveled heart that I have. But this video isn't a rant on the new consoles, it's just an observation I made and I wonder if anybody else could relate to it. So after I got my 360, I got an Xbox One, and then the PlayStation 4, and for that generation I played the PlayStation 4 more than the Xbox One, because let's be honest, that console is pretty ass. Where the 360 was the start of my gaming adventure, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One followed me from 6th grade to when I graduated high school. And your life changes drastically in 7 years, especially as a child going into adulthood. So I thought the reason these consoles don't hit the same anymore is due to my age. I'm an adult. Things have changed. Of course I don't care about consoles like I used to. But that's bullshit. I have a lot of siblings and they didn't have the same reaction toward their new consoles like I did when I was 11. <laughs> Yes! 
And I remember when the PlayStation 4 came out, everybody was excited for the next generation of consoles. And I didn't feel that hype at all for this generation. And that's because a shit ton has happened to this generation to cause this feeling. The original Xbox had Xbox Live, which revolutionized social gaming by being able to talk to random people around the world on the Xbox console. But the big update to this was the Xbox 360 hub, where the me on the Wii usually stayed on just the Wii alone. Your Xbox 360 avatar was able to be seen by everybody that you would play with online. The UI of the Xbox 360 was made for socialization. If friends were offline, they were asleep. And if they were online, they were a touch away to get into a party and chat. The UI was extremely simple for those who wanted to get into an Xbox party and invite some friends to game. But the party chat was only used for private discussions on the most part. But open game chat is where the memories were truly made. If I were to tell a family member that I miss getting called a gay squeaker loser that should kill himself, they'd probably think I'm fucking insane. But there really was something wholesome about toxicity in open game chat. I'd meet people through Call of Duty or Halo and add them as friends. And later down the road, we would invite each other to parties and go play Minecraft where we'd make cool stuff together. And I would constantly break that shitty $20 headset and try to tape it together just so I could continue to talk to people. You guys know what I mean? No. And this carried to the next generation as well. I would join Xbox party chats or PlayStation party chats, but it was more difficult to meet new people. New console UIs are made to be more sleek and simplistic, removing the fun socialization gimmicks. Even Nintendo did this, and the Wii was usually used in local play, but they removed the Miis. What the fuck? Also, now in most games, you can only talk to your team instead of having open communication with the whole lobby. And in some games, you can't even talk at all. I'm even hypocritical and have contributed to less socialization. I'll often mute everybody in a public game game lobby because somebody will have their mic on, but there's no conversation, it just gets obnoxious. People just don't like to talk anymore. The last time I really felt the old times come back was in 2019, when Modern Warfare came out. Shut the, the fuck up, your mom fucking dick. Mother like fucking dick. You just, just from your mom, Shut the fuck bitch. up. But looking back on last gen gaming, it was really quiet. I still socialize a shit ton with friends in party chat, but I found normal game lobbies to be a ghost of its past self. But I still have fun in COD lobbies time to time. You fucking idiot. The flag. Who cares about the yeah, flag? The next point I'm going to bring up will be leading the rest of the arguments for this video. But the main reason consoles don't hit the same today is because of Fortnite. You might think this is a meme, but I shit you not, Fortnite changed gaming and has been the biggest factor to why consoles don't hit the same anymore. Quick story. In seventh grade, I got a school laptop and my friend cracked the admin passcode and installed Steam. And since TF2 was free, I put all my 420 hours in that bitch during the whole school year. And then in 2016, CSGO hit its peak and everyone who owned a gaming PC was playing it. I had a shit rig, but I would get home, throw in some Pyrocynical and try to get past Silver 4. <laughs> that never happened. I would legit get like two frames a second. Fine. This dad's with the son. His dad's, you know, crying. He's PC culture wasn't small, but it wasn't at all mainstream. Like there was a time before Discord, people were using Skype and TeamSpeak. Jesus Christ. Most people who had good PC setups were rich snob neckbeard losers who thought they were better than everybody. And the others were just <laughs> sad and quiet people. It was almost a shame to be a PC gamer. And then Fortnite changed everything. Fortnite released and the game exploded. Everyone in the world started playing it. And then people who were good at the game started becoming e-celebrities. Competitive gaming was a joke to the main stream. MLG was used for fucking montage parodies, but since Fortnite was so mainstream, we saw people gain fame quickly for being good at shooting pixels. Ninja, TSM Myth, Tifu, Dakotas, etc. Where League of Legends and CSGO were the cringe loser games on Twitch for PC players, Fortnite was a mainstream titan that destroyed stereotypes. Ninja was known as the best player in the world, and even if he wasn't, he was the best player in the spotlight. But there was still an issue. If you played on PS4, PC, or Xbox One, you couldn't play with other people unless you had the same console like every other game in the world due to exclusivity. But then on March 15th, 2018, an update released for Fortnite that allowed PlayStation and Xbox to crossplay with PC and mobile. And Ninja, who was considered to be the best player in the world, played a match with Drake, who was the largest artist in the world. Like for real though, God's plan was on every goddamn day on the car radio. And Ninja was on PC, while Drake was on PlayStation 4. And that stream broke the record for the most concurrent viewers of an individual streamer on Twitch, topping at 628,000 people. I know I'm focusing a lot on Fortnite right now, but this was extremely important for video games. It was no longer dorky to use a keyboard and mouse or to have a good PC for higher frame rates. And playing video games wasn't something that made people destined to work at McDonald's. When you start working at McDonald's on a Saturday, this ain't no party and this ain't no disco.
That would be YouTube. Twitch streaming and PC gaming was mainstream, with PC gaming seen as the best way to game. I had friends who were full on console elitists buy pre-built setups that summer to play Fortnite, and they entered the world of PC gaming. And when they got their PC, they started playing with friends who were on consoles. The main point is that Fortnite started to break the barriers of crossplay. I know Bedrock Edition Minecraft had it first, but Fortnite mainstreamed it. And a year later, crossplay was introduced for everybody in Fortnite. If you played on Xbox, you could play with people on PlayStation, and eventually the Nintendo Switch joined the party. This was the death of the mainstream console war. Nobody gave a shit about what platform you played on, because a majority of people were just going to play Fortnite anyway, and this principle started spreading everywhere. You could crossplay in Rocket League, Call of Duty 2019 and Ford, which is the largest FPS franchise of all time, Apex Legends, even the new Battlefield, and while it's a fucking train wreck, at least it progressed at the times and now has crossplay. And while this was great for gaming, it was horrible for consoles. The appeal of upgrading a console was for exclusivity. You couldn't play certain games unless you were on next gen. You couldn't talk to last gen people unless they were on next gen. And you couldn't play with last gen players, only next gen players. So the urge to upgrade was due to the fear of missing out. And as of right now, if you have a PlayStation 4 and not a PS5, or an Xbox One and not a Series X, you are not missing out at all. Games are crossplay, voice chat is crossplay, so this reduces urgency. There's no urgency to upgrade to the next gen. When the Switch was released, the only game to play at the time was Zelda, which was a strong system seller. And the gimmick of the Nintendo Switch was enough to make people have optimism and hope for the console and it paid off. If you are a college student, or tend to travel a lot, or just want a game on the go, then the Switch was an awesome console. I would bring my Switch to class and fight friends and smash on that small ass side Joy-Con, a race in Mario Kart. The Switch was a console with a unique gimmick other than just playing video games, so it had the same appeal as the Wii. And as of today, it has a strong catalog to justify its purchase. When the pandemic hit, everybody was playing Animal Crossing. I had female friends who were super like anti-video game because it made people cave troll thinkers get a Switch, share their friend code with me, and then I would proceed to steal their peaches because my island did not have them. The PS5 and Series X as of today don't have a spectacular exclusive catalog, and the consoles are still ridiculously scalped. I got my PS5 because I know in the future I'm going to play God of War Ragnarok, the new Spider-Man, or maybe even try that new Horizon game. <laughs> that's probably not going to happen, let's be honest. But that's a long time for now, and I had the money to spend. Plus, it's kind of my job. Hmm, Skipper, you don't even have 100k. Yeah, yeah, okay, calm down, buddy. The console seller for the PS5 was Miles Morales, which was on PS4, and the Demon Souls remake, which was a remake of a From Software game. A From Software game, most people will quit in the first hour due to it being too difficult. Even if you don't play the Souls games, come on, you've seen the Elden Ring memes. And the seller for the Xbox Series X was Halo Infinite, which got delayed a year and was mid as fuck. <laughs> Watch this video to know why. And since PC gaming is in the mainstream now, all the games I would play on Xbox for exclusivity, I could play on my PC. So if you have a decent PC, you could just stay on PC. Game Pass is on PC and is a great deal. When Halo Infinite came out, I played it on PC. I've been playing Halo the Master Chief Collection on PC for the last like two years and that has crossplay. Most PC games on Game Pass have crossplay with Xbox game consoles. Even PlayStation exclusives are crawling their way over to PC. You could play God of War on Steam. So if the exclusives have accessibility to other platforms and are still available to last gen, there's no urgency for these consoles. And them being scalped on top of that doesn't give incentive to upgrade. But if you don't have a gaming console and can't afford a good gaming PC, the Xbox Series S is actually a great purchase to get into next gen gaming. For only 300 bucks, you could run any game game good, and play future next-gen ready games and abuse the shit out of Game Pass. And all you lose is being able to use a physical disc. And for some reason, this system isn't scalped at all. It was the most sold console over Christmas and is great for people who want to game casually without breaking the bank. But if you have an older console, you don't need to upgrade yet. Earlier I mentioned I have siblings and something that I found interesting was that because of these principles, they had no loyalty. They didn't give a fuck if someone played on Xbox or PlayStation and they didn't give a fuck about owning one themselves. The next generation of children are not playing exclusive games. Because of crossplay and free to play, kids play free to play games with crossplay like Roblox, Apex, and Fortnite. Even if the game costs money, it's basic with no exclusivity like Minecraft or Call of Duty, which also have crossplay. They're not playing Halo, Gears of War, or even God of War because kids are dumb and don't really like campaign games. They want fun sandbox and battle royales. Kids care more about the games than the box that plays them. So it makes sense that they aren't excited to open up a PS5 or Series X because the next day they're just gonna play Fortnite with the same friend group in the same lobby and at least two of those fuckers for sure don't even have the same console they're playing. When I saw my 360, I saw a future where I could play Halo Reach and custom games in my room. I played Gears of War 3 when it came out. I experienced
experienced a whole new world. But now with my PS5, I just use it to play campaign games and relax because my ass starts to hurt when I'm in my PC chair for more than four hours and I like the controller. And I'm okay with this. Like I said in the intro, this isn't a rant. It's just how the cookie crumbles. Console gaming doesn't hit the same anymore because gaming principles for people to play together have gotten better. If you're a PC gamer, I think it's fucking awesome that you could play God of War on Steam and don't even need a PlayStation console. And in the future, PlayStation will just continue to feed the PC gamers. If you never owned an Xbox, I think it's amazing that you don't need to purchase a console and can play most of the Xbox exclusives through Steam or Game Pass for PC. I had friends who didn't grow up with Halo who played Halo on PC recently and they love it. I think it's awesome that if you own a Switch, PlayStation, PC or Xbox that you could play games with each other and older consoles without being locked to the system you own. I think it's awesome that if you can't afford a PS5 or Series X, you don't need to upgrade or give into scalper bullshit because you aren't missing out and you could still cross play with new consoles and all the other guys. But that idea of having that new world isn't gone completely because those siblings I just mentioned are still having that moment I had with my 360 alongside a shit ton of other kids in the world where they didn't care much about the Xbox Series X because it serves the same purpose as the Xbox one, they are in love with VR. Like the 360, the Wii, and the Switch, this is something new. VR is only just starting to hit the mainstream because it's becoming more accessible. And VR is still super young, but children are having a blast playing Gorilla Tag, VR Chat, Pavlov. I was not turning towards you like I could have. Yellow tape around his body. Or any game that could be played in VR. I bring up the VR consoles like the Quest, because consoles don't hit the same anymore because they're not alienating. Alienation is a shit gimmick. Upgrading due to the fear of not being able to communicate or play with people is whack. And I'm happy that principle is abolished. But console gaming could still be special and exciting like it once was. The Nintendo Switch and VR prove this. I know they both have exclusive games for their console, but I don't mind that. The Switch is fun and has an exciting gimmick that makes it stand out. VR is fun and has an exciting gimmick that makes it stand out. Gaming isn't dead, it's just that consoles are now becoming PCs. And normal games are starting to suck, so people think everything sucks. I'm grateful I grew up as a console kid in the old generation, but times have changed. And if the future generation could all play together and experience evolution that doesn't surround who gets to play Halo or not, I'm all for it. Well, that's the video. I'll be making more new videos in the future. This is my Twitter where I make funny tweets. Subscribe, please. I'm getting close to 100K. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Tell me your thoughts and goodbye. Boys, boy, turn it into psycho.